Hi everyone, this is an introduction to data warehousing video. We will understand what a data warehouse is, talk about a standard data warehouse architecture and finally discuss benefits, challenges and future. So let's get started. What is a data warehouse? A data warehouse is a system that integrates data from multiple different kinds of systems for business use. A data warehouse typically stores data in dimensional form which is denormalized. What is a dimension? It's a data modeling approach that comprise of facts table at the center along with set of dimensional tables as its lookup tables. For more knowledge on this subject, I will cover it in the data modeling series. Stay tuned. This doesn't mean a data warehouse cannot be normalized one. Yes, it can, but it is a less popular option and also beats the purpose. A data warehouse is mostly used for analytics, reporting and business intelligence. And finally, the key difference between a transactional system and data warehouse is that a data warehouse maintains history data. This is a very powerful use of it as well. Before we begin talking about how a generic data warehouse architecture looks like, having basic understanding of various types of data stores like OLAP, OLTP, Datamart, etc. would allow you to follow this video easily. Hence, I recommend you check out my other quick and short video on types of data stores in this very series. Even otherwise, you should be able to follow this video without any issues. So let's start discussing. What all types of source systems can input data into a data warehouse? We can have OLTP systems, ODS and even data warehouse. Yes, a data warehouse can send data to another data warehouse. In addition, there can be raw files directly inputted as well as data coming from outside the organization which is ex external source. Now typically, a staging area also known as a stage is a landing zone for a data warehouse. It should ideally maintain the exact same copy as a source system. Major advantage of doing this is if there is a data issue, one can refer to stage to understand what data was sent by the source without having to engage multiple stakeholders again and again. Data in the stage is extracted and loaded by ETL processes. Please note that the transformation usually doesn't happen at this layer. If you would like to know more about ETL design patterns and how the extraction and loading takes place, do check out my other video titled 10 ETL design patterns in this very series. Now, ETL is used again this time with transformations to load data from stage into either a normalized data store, a dimensional data store or data mart. Most widely, it's a dimensional data store. A dimensional data store is a result of dimensional modeling done using facts and dimensions which is Kimball methodology. I will be covering this in detail in my data modeling series so please subscribe the channel to stay updated. This is essentially a data warehouse. And finally we have a consumption layer in the data warehouse which is what a data warehouse outputs. It can create an OLAP system for analytical or reporting purposes, send data to another data warehouse using extracts or DB connections. It can provide materialized view to business users for quick querying of data for a day to day use. And finally, it can create a multi-dimensional database also known as a queue for analytical or business intelligence purposes. So what is data warehousing? In simple terms, it's the process to build a data warehouse. Where exactly does it fit into this picture? Right here. All these layers are a result of data warehousing. We will now understand what all actions are performed at every layer during data warehousing. First layer is source to stage. The action here is also known as data sourcing. Data transformation is usually performed in the second layer. It can also be performed before loading to consumption layer if there is a need for it. While I have limited the conversation to three layers since there is a generic, this is a generic architecture, 
Mostly the data warehouse stores represented by NDS, DDS and Data Mart can have many more layers within. Next, if we combine the first two layers, action performed here are data consolidation and data mapping. A data mapping is performed between source fields and target data warehouse fields using business rules and transformations required to meet them are also documented in a mapping document. At the final layer, data provisioning is done for the information to be effectively consumed. And finally, data integration, extraction, load, data quality checks, data auditing, and metadata capture or management is also performed in almost all layers of a typical data warehouse. Now we will be covering benefits that a data warehouse brings on the table as well as challenges. A data warehouse is usually a single stop shop for business looking for data. Hence, users have quicker access to data and information as opposed to reaching out to multiple sources to get the required information. This aids in faster and more informed decision making, hence improved return on investment. The data store in data warehouse undergoes various data cleaning exercises as well as data quality checks. This makes data more usable. Finally, a major difference between an OLTP system and data warehouse is the storage of history data in the latter. This enables analytics for data over a period of time and hence effective insights. And now challenges. A data within a data warehouse can only be as good as its sources. This is because a data warehouse doesn't capture or update any data for customers. So, if the quality of data is bad in its source, the same will reflect in the data warehouse. Another challenge is that data is loaded from multiple diverse sources. At times, it can have similar kind of data. This often leads to data inconsistencies. So, what's the future of data warehousing? Will data lakes be replacing it? The short answer is no. Data warehouse and data lakes will continue to coexist in organizations. In fact, they will complement each other. What is a data lake? I will be explaining the same in my big data series. Next, data warehousing automation is trending. It is basically an automated way of building a data warehouse and covering all steps in its life cycle using best practices. Another upcoming field is cloud data warehousing, which involves building a data warehouse as a managed service on cloud. So that's all we have for today. If you like this video and had a good learning experience, then do check out our other videos. Do like and share. Also subscribe the channel for latest videos and trends in the world of architecture. See you in the next video.